Uh, hello, and welcome to episode 11 of the Barn Door Restoration. Uh, last episode, I was cleaning up bits of the front frame. This episode, I had planned to be rebuilding that front frame, uh, but that changed a bit. So it's been a bit of delay since the last episode. I took a bit of a break from the barn door uh, to build a break. Uh, as I'm trying to build all the replacement metal parts for this, um, I need a good way to, to bend the metal. Um, I didn't have a good break. I just had a small hand built one. And I wanted to be able to bend you know, cross members, you know, the, uh, the outriggers, uh, you know, all of the little parts throughout this thing. And so uh, this is almost five feet long. So I needed a five foot break. And I would have liked to have been able to bend 14 gauge on it. Well, a five foot break that burns, bends 14 gauge is a little pricey. Uh, plus most of them that could do that wouldn't be able to bend my outriggers and cross members, the shorter ones, because they're so deep. Um, so I decided to build one. I had some of the material already, so it really only cost me about $300 of material. Uh, if I had to buy everything new, it probably would have been six or $700 of material. Uh, it's quite capable. It won't bend full length 14 gauge, which I didn't really think it would anyway. Uh, 14 gauge is pretty solid metal. And for a handbrake to build, to bend five feet of 14 gauge is be, uh, be quite uh, a lot of pressure on it. But it seems to be able to do everything else, so it'll work for me. I can work around uh, the 14 gauge. Uh, it will bend shorter pieces, so that's good. And so the other thing I had to do was uh, get some metal in. Uh, where I'm located, I just don't have a store I can go and buy a 4 8 sheet of 14 gauge steel. Uh, so I had to bring it in. I ended up getting four sheets, a sheet of 14, 16, 18, and 20. And that pretty co much covers all the thicknesses in the bottom of the bus. And it should be enough to finish off the frame and floor structure. And so that's what uh, delayed the build. Um, and the reason I started on the rear frame instead of the front is I want something a little simpler to start with. I hadn't uh, tried shaping the 14-gauge uh, before, and there's going to be a lot of odd shapes in the front. So I want something simpler to practice. I also wanted to see some progress quick, and this is going to... Have some progress quick. Um, so to start, uh, 14 gauge, I, I have a shear, a hand shear, one of you with the arm you pull shears. On the last time I used big sheets of metal, I just bolted to a plank, put it on the floor, and I cut the sheets. I tried it with the 14 gauge, I did one cut, it was too much work. Uh, it's faster than cutting it with the angle grinder, but it was more work to do it. So I just, uh, on the, when it was in the big pieces, I cut it with the angle grinder. Once it's cut into smaller pieces I can handle, uh, then it worked pretty well uh, in the vise to shear it. So then for the frame rails, the old frame rails, a lot of it was good, but then there was a lot of bad spots. So it just seemed easier to replace the whole rail than it was to go to patch all the parts. Uh, it'll do a better job anyway in the end. So I just take the 14 gauge and bent the correct profile and also uh, got the correct radius so they match up. The 14 gauge, uh, I thought it was supposed to be 1.83 millimeters thick. This one's actually 1.9 millimeters. The frame is supposed to be two millimeters when they were new, but this one measures 1.9 millimeters everywhere on the flat. Uh, the lip is different because that's because it was pressed. Some places are stretched, some places are compressed. So there varies quite a bit in the lip, uh, but the flat part was about 1.9. So it worked out well, they ended up exact. Uh, I'm not sure if this was thinner than two because of the way it was manufactured or if it was just the tolerances on the metal back then weren't as good. Uh, so I started with these sections of frame rail and uh, I just notched them to fit in here. Um, I took the frame off to notch them, make it easier. Uh, once I had them roughly notched, I put the everything back in the jig uh, so I could make sure everything lined up. 
Now, in my excitement to get moving on this and get working on it, uh, I made a few mistakes. One, I notched too deep in my rail because I thought it was longer than it was. No big deal. I just had to add an extra inch spacer in here. Uh, after I did that, I settled down and paid more attention to what I was doing. So, you know, after they were put back in here and finished fitting, welded, I then took the frame out upside down again and did the bottom curve piece because the frame curves up in there. So to build that piece, uh, all I did was take a piece of metal and bent the like a Z shape of the bottom lip and then bent it in a curve. Now, 14 gauge is pretty solid stuff to shrink, but it stretches pretty good. By taking that lip and putting it on metal and hitting it with a with a hammer, you squeeze the metal and it stretches and it puts a curve in it. Uh, the bottom side, because it's so thick, it's hard to shrink. I did put a few cuts, but it stayed about a quarter inch or six millimeters or so from the edge uh, and let that little bit shrink in there. But I did put a few cuts, uh, bent my curve, and uh, once I get it was shaped and fitting perfect here, uh, then I just welded in those little cuts, cleaned it off, uh, fitted everything in, welded it. It didn't go too bad. Uh, the first one was a lot slower. The second one went really quick. Uh, then the inner piece, I just cut a piece and butt welded it in. I didn't spot weld the bottom lip yet. I'm going to wait on that. I still have more inside pieces to put in, but that has to go in after the outriggers are on and the center cross member has to be spot welded to the inner piece. I also have to experiment with the spot welder because two layers of 1.9 millimeter steel is going to be a lot to spot weld through. And I'm not, <laughs> not very confident that my spot welder is going to do it. If it does, it's not a big deal. I will plug weld it from the back, smooth it off, and maybe a spot welder will make a nice dent after to make it look like it's spot welded. But, but I'll do some uh, experimenting first, see if it works. The frame rails, once they were welded, they had a little twist in them. There's not a lot of strength for the twisting. So I did have to straighten those a bit, but that was very easy. Just a little pry and then dolly the joint. Uh, so I think that's about it for this episode. Next episode, I'm going to do the front frame rails, hopefully. Uh, I just received a piece of frame uh, with a detail I didn't have on mine. It was completely rotted away, so I'm pretty excited about that. So I'll be able to use this piece when I rebuild mine. So that's the next, uh, next episode. If you want to see that, please subscribe so you don't miss it. Uh, so, I, oh, keep watching for some video of this work and stuff. <laughs> so like I said, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching.